Hey, whoa, 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 hey, 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 hey. uh oh. What, what, what are you, what are you yeah, doing? Yeah, not a good idea. What are you I'm doing a, over there? I'm gonna I'm go weld this up, and then, and then I'm done. No, and uh, yeah, no. I'm about like 500 hours this week. 500 hours and this I'm week. gonna get bass boat Saturday. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, what are you, uh, what are you welding on? A car. A car. What kind of what car. kind of car are you? Well, it's part on? of a car. Part of a car. You know, I, I was gonna put this on the car tomorrow, but I don't I don't know. <laughs> Jason, you know what? I'm pretty confident. Let it go. Okay, squeeze the trigger. Yeah, right. Don't worry about it. Squeeze the trigger. Okay. okay cool. I'm not got worried it. about it. Okay, squeeze so, it. Okay. So what what kind of car? Look, I got 500 hours. It's a blue car. It said Honda on the bag. <laughs> it's a Honda. It's, it's part, a blue car. You sure a it's a Honda? Honda? Did you look it's at the Honda. bin? What kind of materials do you have on there? It says manufactured by Honda. There you go, it's a Honda. Honda, there you go, see? And what kind of steel is that? God, when am I going to get to weld? How many the, more questions you guys got? Well, what kind of steel do you have? It's a steely type. The steel type it's that the stack. magnet sticks to. <laughs> what kind it's of, not aluminum. Are it's you sure? It's not European either. Wait, are you sure a magnet sticks to it? Did you test it? No, do them not test it. Oh, yeah. No, 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 not with a torch handle. Look, this looks too clean. No, I mean, you don't hit it with that. Here. The more so this the gets worn, off, the better it? the weld gets. You want a magnet? You want to try with a magnet? Yeah, it's yeah. a sticky thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sticky it works thing. by adhesive. Sticky thing. Sticky thing. Oh, look at that. It's 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 ferrous. It's ferrous. No, it's a car. <laughs> ferrous is a movie. What types of uh, welding joints are you gonna make on there? Sticky ones. Are you make some plug welds. Sticky ones. Yeah, yeah. I'm gonna make Not some of those. Not fusion ones. Sticky ones. Well, I like oh, that. It's got, the panel just has to stick. What I size mean, plug welds? What size electrical wire do you have? Little. Wait, wait, wait. No, I got it. About that size. About I had somebody do a job interview one time. What size welding wire do we use? He goes like this. I go, you know what? I got to give you credit. At least he got it somewhat right. It's, <laughs> it's, it's what? Small. Small. Okay, yes. Small. Have you, have you made any practice welds on that yet? No, because Larry was out here earlier. Why would I need to make practice welds? <laughs> <laughs> so, so we got a few things we probably, we should probably address start off with me uh, yes so we've, we've she's identified that it's a blue car yes it's blue that's good and it's a honda it's a honda um so we may want to know what the oem recommends it is ferrous type things. material it we know that. that's a movie it is ferrous <laughs> it's a magnetic type piece of metal okay is that better for you i'll take that <laughs> i'll take that because <laughs> so. because the magnets was sticky to the material well let's um Let's take a look at this vehicle. I did a little bit of research. Where'd my remote go? God, I don't have time for OE procedures. I want a bass boat. My remote go. What's that? Where'd the clicker go? Oh, uh, it's, right. Hey, it's right. I'll it's use right this. there. I'll right next the, to you. I'll use this one until I find another one. <laughs> until you find another one? Until I, I find, find another, another one. one. All right, so I did some research for you. This happens to be a Honda Civic. Don't, don't touch my iced tea. Your iced uh. tea. This is a Honda Civic. Honda Civic. It's a Honda really? Civic. Really? Yep. And it's got some... It uh, looks small. It's, well, it's not a full-size car anymore. Oh, what is that? Uh, it's, a, it's a recycled part, they call them. Yeah. There's, a, there's other names for them, too. Uh, starts with a J, ends with a K. <laughs> <laughs> Rhymes with unk. <laughs> <laughs> so, we've got some different materials on here that you should probably be aware of before you start making your practice welds, before you start making any welds on the actual vehicle. Because um, we've got some different types of materials on here. We've got some what's called 1500 megapascal steel. It's really strong, 1500 MPA. We've got some, I think there's some 980 on here. There's some 590, there's some 270. There's all kinds of different types of steel on here. And how Honda recommends welding each of those does have some variables. Now, yes. if I've got a Honda Civic like this, I should probably be opening up that manual first and, and taking a look and see before I make my practice walls, what exactly am I going to even be doing? That should be the first thing you do is always look at the material construction of the vehicle. And off the top of my head, I can't think of a manufacturer that doesn't have a materials chart for each one of their vehicles. I'm talking the popular ones, not some sure. wacky supercar. Um, but, you know, for, for the everyday cars, even Benz, Audi, Porsche, even the European cars, they have a materials chart to tell you what kind of materials you're welding on, what you're working with. Even in some cases, somebody might even tell you, uh, like Honda's great, they give you that chart that tells you this type of material can only be welded with this. Yep. Uh, you can only use weld through primer with this. And actually, Honda's one of the few companies that actually tell you on certain materials, you can use squeeze type resistant spot welding. So it's really nice that they give you a chart, but you need to check it. 
It, and and it's, that's a great point. And, and we were just talking a little bit before the show even. So we're going to touch a little bit more on MIG brazing momentarily, but even within the same make model, there might be some different requirements based on the year. Um, but we're going to talk about that when we get to the MIG brazing part of some things that we see out here. But again, we've got a ton of different steels on here. Honda is one vehicle manufacturer, as you, as you mentioned, that does have a number of different welding parameters on it. So the first one that we've got up here is actually for spot welding. So Honda has specific parameters around spot welding in different locations. Now in this particular photo, we can see that we've got two different uh, types of spot welds. Uh, spot weld condition number, what is that, 14, 14 20, 20, and 20, 28. And they're, and they're different. So yeah. within this one panel here, I've got two different spot welding requirements. Um, you'll see in some other areas, I've also got some uh, now, make brace requirements. When you say two different spot welding requirements, yes. what does that mean to the technician? So that means to the technician that again, I've got, so the uh, welding condition number 14 is calling for, is that 8,500 uh, amps with a 600 millisecond um, welding time at, what is that? 30, 30, 350 40. pounds of force, or Newton meters. Newton, Newton meters. Yeah. Newton meters, so, some force. Um, whereas welding condition number 20, 26, 20, is at 8,000 amps. Is that, so they've got, I think Honda's got like 30 different parameters on here that as a technician, as I'm going around there, I need to be adjusting my welder to meet those welding conditions to perform now, an effective weld for a Honda vehicle. My smart welder. It's not I, that smart. When I, when I, you know, so I've, I've clamped my part up, I'm ready to go. Yep. I turn my smart welder on. And when I do the first pull of the trigger, it's sensing the material right, and it's it's adjusting my amps and my hold time, and and I, there's nothing I got to do, right? Uh, I'm not sure. No, not that's really. The it checks case. the impedance between it, the electrical current charge between it, but you still have to tweak the equipment a little bit, and you still have to do a practice weld to check it to make sure it's working properly, and you have to set up your panels for resistance welding, the same they're gonna be in the car. So in the case of Honda, you don't have adhesive, but if you're using adhesive, you have to use adhesive in your practice. If you're using weld through primer in your practice weld uh, on the car, you have to use in your practice. If you're using no uh, uh, um, uh, uh, um, weld through primer adhesive, you have to do that in your practice weld at the same way that you're gonna do it on the vehicle. And you can't take these iCar coupons, and I call them iCar coupons, because that's the best place to get these things is from the same source. Well, they're from iCar, so that's, right. that, that helps. From the same type it's of source. accurate description. You, <laughs> right, well, you, if you ask, you, like what we I do is, we asked our iCar instructor, the welding guy in the area, and says, where do you get them from? He says, oh, here's the address, and you can order them. You get these coupons, they're great to practice, just normal practice, but when you work on the car, you have to weld with the same type of material and thickness you're working on the car, yeah. which sometimes can be a part from the vehicle that you're cutting off, or in some cases, you might have to buy a used component or a, or a salvage component to just have in the shop yep. so you can cut up in multiple pieces, like this, small, so you got a lot of welds on this car, yep. a lot of practice welds, and just mark it off and say, all right, I'm gonna make my practice welds, do my destructive testing, make sure I have the proper penetration, the proper, uh, um, the proper uh, uh, weld length, the proper depth, the proper width, and make sure that it is proper, and then rip it apart and make sure I have the right tear out. Yep. So at least I can have the confidence when I go to weld on the car, yeah, yeah. I should be okay. Yeah. I'm not even practice welds. Let's get back to the car. <laughs> so, what you're saying. <laughs> what are you saying? Ain't nobody, mm -hmm. ain't nobody got time for that. I need that <laughs> meme. Ain't nobody got time for that, right? But <laughs> if I'm at the car, does that mean I got to mark, like, the, where the number 14 welds go, and I got a mark where the number 28 welds go, and then uh, I have Sharpie to- Sharpie could be your friend in this I case. I gotta stop. I think that might be a good idea to know exactly what you're gonna be doing and I gotta that location. So I don't just drag it over there and pull the trigger. You're, you're just correct. because you welded on a Honda Accord, same year as this Civic, and now you're gonna go to the Civic, you don't leave the machine settings the same way, and, and even if you just stopped welding and moved right to this car and it's set up and you're gonna weld, you still have to make practice welds. It's different, just like arguably a Honda Accord and a Toyota Camry are relatively the same size, relatively the similar type construction, completely different weld parameters, even though it's similar material on similar size cars, so you always gotta check. Yeah. I want a refund on my smart welder. <laughs> Your smart welder talk is... Your, talk to your welder. I think you should call it an intelligent welder, not a smart it, welder. It's intelligent, but it's not smart. It's letting you know whether or not it can make a weld. Yes. Right? So it, it's, that, that's what it's working on. So, okay, so we, we talked about those two welding parameters for okay. your for your Honda Civic B-pillar that we've got over here. Okay. Um, Honda's got 30, 29 other welding parameters on top of that just for spot welding. 
So again, if I'm going to go through and I'm going to be making my, 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 my true practice coupons, um, I want to make sure that I've got those welding parameters for each one. And I want to make sure I'm using that same steel yes. as I've got on it. Um, Especially think, if you're welding a thinner piece of outer panel, which is usually 0.9 millimeter in most cases, to a thicker one or 1.2 millimeter advanced high strength steel type component, uh, 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 600 to 900 or even a 1500 piece, you need to make sure that that welding parameters set it up the right way mm -hmm. and your practice welds are the same way to ensure that you're making a, a, a proper penetrated weld. Yeah. It, it, again, back to these real quickly. So these are great for like, this is like a, kind of the blocking and tackling, like after school drills. We start getting into here, now it's kind of our game walkthrough yes. before we actually get to our game where we're welding on the vehicle. So That's a great important. analogy. I like that. I like that. I figure you're, you know, you're yeah. some football boys in your house. Yeah, that's that's game. I, like I like that. I'm in on that one. So, like that. okay, so let's stick with spot welding for a little bit here. So we're going to jump away from hot a little bit, but what I want to talk about, Larry, is some of the differences between like the welding parameters that we've got here. So if I'm be welding on a Honda vehicle, I need equipment capable of beating these welding parameters. Mm -hmm. How is that different than if I'm part of a network and I have to choose a type piece of equipment versus a network that is saying, hey, here's the requirements for the equipment that you should buy. I choose so, the cheapest one so I can if, find. If, <laughs> no. If, <laughs> which so one? If, if I'm not on a certified program, but I'm welding on Honda, what does that mean to me? Uh, you're going to really have to check the parameters of the machine. Okay. They'll usually tell you what it has to do. And, and most of the top of the line companies that are out there will have some sort of machine that's on somebody's program that's going to meet it. So for example, I have some companies, and we can't say this to Kristen, I have some companies that are on European uh, 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 contracts, and their machines will have set parameters. So I might have one machine that's qualified for Benz, Audi, Porsche, Land Rover, Jaguar, but I might have different program settings in there. Then I have another setting that's just generalized, which then I'd have to go to the Honda program and figure out of dialing in for that to make it work. So I have one machine that covers a bunch. I might have to have two welders just because one machine doesn't past sure. that. And I'll be honest, Honda, GM are pretty uh, liberal with how many machines right. they've approved. So <coughs> basically it should cover most of the other companies that you might be on a program for like Tesla or Audi or Benz or Porsche. You might have the machine right. already, you just have to do some different machine settings. But as a technician, I can't just walk over and choose the spot welder I like hey. because I like the color of one over the other yeah, one. No. I need to know what I'm working on. Before I've, I I've had shops and I've recommended this. You get a, a Brother P and what you do is you print out what machines it's on the program for. Okay. I've, I got one shop that actually has some extra emblems from cars. They put a little bit of glue on there and they stick the emblems on there. Yeah. So like, oh, that's the Audi Benz Porsche one. Okay, I got it. Yeah, I like <laughs> you know, that, I like I that. I got one shop that has, that does a lot of GM and does a lot of Ford. So they got one aluminum welder with the two different welding uh, uh, wires for aluminum. And uh, uh, they actually have on there, one side Audi, one side uh, Ford. So they just know they pull the machine over and they know which side of the machine to use. So you can do little cheats like that and that comes in handy, but it can get expensive to have five, six, seven different welders depending on what you work on. But it, it also gets expensive when you kill somebody. And yeah. I, I think the general, the, the, the misconception in this industry is that if it sticks, it's good. Like I welded and it, it's, it's stuck, they're connected. I've made a joint, I have installed that panel and we go, well, that's good. And there's a reason why an OE has 31 different weld parameters. And there's a reason why there's only certain welders. And I don't wanna say a brand of welder, but Correct. that that welder has a pressure or a temp requirement is because just because that panel sticks doesn't mean that it's going to protect the occupant. I mean, especially right. like D-rings and all of these things. One thing <clears throat> you have to remember, when you do practice welds, here's a plug weld, but a resistance weld would be similar. It's gonna give me one round circle. I have two choices. I'm either gonna twist this in some cases. In a lot of cases, I'm gonna peel this. Mm -hmm. And in some rare, rare cases, I'm gonna have two welds and I have to do a wedge, yeah. which is what Honda requires. That's great, but you don't know how much force you needed to pull, okay? So Kristen's gonna pull at a different force than you and me are gonna pull at, and you and me are gonna pull at different forces. Unless you have a lap shear type puller with a, with, a, with a computerized program to tell me how much force, I don't know how much force it is. Now they've come up with 
your practice worlds and how they have to pull apart. But I don't know what it's going to pull apart at. And that's why they're giving you these yep. parameters because they've tested it and know if I set the machine at number 11 there and whatever that number 11 re reading was, if I set it at that, I should be okay. But number 11 versus number one versus number 16 is going to do the same thing. It's going to pull a hole on the outside panel. That's all I know. It pulled the hole, it passes for what I have to do for practice, but it's not under testing. It's not a lab test. It's not a, a, a an engineering mm -hmm. you know type of test that I know what I'm pulling the strength at. So this is this is our little gray area that we have to get into, and that's why we have to make sure. I mean, it's we a gray do these. area, but it's also um, um, <clears throat> you know I, I respect equipment distributors, and I respect that they're trying to sell stuff and make a living, but please. For the love of, this is my second for the love of donut plea today, right? <laughs> Stop taking your welding advice from someone that's selling you equipment. Yeah. I mean, do your research and you may like that guy. I got a, <clears throat> I got equipment providers I love. Yeah. Yes. But for that particular make, model, and OE, I can't buy their stuff. Yeah. And that's where this smart welder myth keeps becoming, you know, it keeps it's generating. It's where we'll walk into a shop and they've got one welder and I'm like, well, you know, what do you do for this brand of cars? And they're like, no, 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 we use that for everything. Well, you know, another thing on that point with the resistance weld is let's just bring it back to a plug weld because certain times you have to use a plug weld. You know, years ago it used to be an eight millimeter plug weld hole. Now I'm seeing anywhere from eight to 13 millimeter plug weld holes that are required by manufacturers. Six millimeters. Six millimeters yeah. in some cases. Um, it depends on how much material you're welding through, what type of material you're welding through. If you're doing silicone bronze or MIG brazing versus mag welding, there's a lot of parameters out sure. there on just a plug weld hole size because I can't get access to both sides. And, and once again, to stress this, we don't have a resistance welder here, but you never do a single-sided spot yeah. weld. Well, you know, it's just, you're not good enough to make up for science. No. So, I mean, I know in, in the body shop business, there's a lot of guys out there that think they're great welders. I don't want to hurt your feelings. You're not, because this isn't what we do for a living. It's not our, our full-time job, mm -hmm. right? We're, you know, we're doing lots of different things all day, and we don't weld eight hours a day, seven days, or five days a week or whatever. But, but some are better than others. Right. But your skill never beats science. No. And the science is in the wire requirement, the temperature, the pressures, the size of the of the spot of the weld, that's the science. And so you can't out weld science no matter how good you are. And we are still in an industry where, I mean, we this year we're out doing shop audits or we're doing post repair inspections and I'm still running into technicians that believe they're better than the procedures or the requirements. And that they don't need to look and practice. A or large do any of this. percentage of the shops we do uh, uh, reviews on, and Jason's been on a few of them. The welding tips on the the resistance welders are no good for a very long time. Wait, and then even on the mag welders, there's so much soot and so much slag <laughs> stuck that, inside. Not that one anymore. Not that one, but stuck inside the contact. I tip guess what I was doing. And, and the I, nozzle. Yeah. It's like you're not making anything good on this. Well, what I thought is when I go into shops, I see. <laughs> where it's like it's angled off and blown out. And I thought that that's like, you know, like a like a calligraphy pen. It lets you get a little closer to the paper. Oh, my favorite is all and the so welding that wire that's stuck better through weld, a hole. Right? Yeah. You, you begin, <laughs> I love when we see the welding wire stuck through a hole and there's a whole bunch of, you know, one inch to three backside. inch. Backside. Backside, yeah, now you don't see that. Undercoating. As long Just, as they put corrosion protection on that. <laughs> undercoating and a sound deadening pad, it, gone. Now, you mentioned something a little while ago that, that prompted something in my head that I want to bring up and uh, I'm going a little off script. I'm not sure if you're if you're familiar with people going off script or not, but uh, so I was at an event recently and you, and you just made the comment about like, we're not professional welders, we're not doing this every day. And someone made that comment, but the way that they the way that they said it, they have kind of implied like it's okay to be not as good of a welder because we don't do it every day. Which is not what you're saying. It's what you're saying. We need to be making our, our <coughs> practice welds, whether it's nights, weekends, if I got a break, whatever, it doesn't matter, but to, to keep those skills honed, but it's important to make those practice welds because we're not welding every single day necessarily. Oh, and we're, yeah, so and we need to be doing this on a regular ba yeah. basis, doing this every single time we're welding on a vehicle. Yeah. And then... I, you know, I don't know, I can't believe anyone would actually say that out loud. I mean, so if that came out of somebody's mouth, <laughs> I, I had to walk away. Uh, I, I, I just walked I, away. I was a part I, of that, so I can't comment. <laughs> Because I'm glad the two what of you we there. do, if I was just making 
you know, golf cart racks to hold your golf clubs. Okay, I'm a crappy welder. If I was making feed bins for the cows, okay, I'm a crappy welder. But I'm putting cars back together that carry human souls to and from life events. And so I don't do it every day, but I got to take it serious and take my practice. And we don't do enough practicing yep. in the industry because we kind of think it's no big deal. But I also don't, I wasn't the last one to touch that welder maybe. What? Or even if I was the last one to touch the welder. I mean, how many of you have used your computer one day, come in the next day and it won't power up again? All the time, right? Right, I mean, there's just, or, or your TV goes out one night in the middle of the night and you don't know why it happened. That welder. Or a Facebook feed. Takes Facebook a, feed went out on us this the, week, yes. right? The show and because, I got the blame for that, by the way. Yeah, I got did. the blame. It was my fault. And well, you were we yelling found at Mark in the previous show, <laughs> yeah. and we thought you had violated. Right. So some just Facebook blame code. Larry with no evidence. Yeah. I was accused, and no one gave me a, an apology yet. Yeah. But that welder might have worked perfect yesterday, and then today, for some reason, there's a problem that uh, I don't know you about. Could, listen, there are times we get bird nesting. Okay. The I wire. I go fishing. <laughs> the wire Birds, can be welding fishing wow, Listen, the, the wire could be towards the end of the big, huge, you know, hundred foot, hundred foot tall spool that they're pulling it off of, it's a big and spool. you could you could get a bad spool at the end, and all of a sudden it birds nests, and you know. Kristen just welded perfectly. I made practice welds are perfect. I get to the car and it bird's nest on me. What the hell? On steel. What the hell happened here? Yep. I got a bad spool of wire now. I'm at the end of it or whatever the case. Or I run out of wire. That's another big thing. Guys never open it up and look and go, I don't think I have enough wire left to finish this weld because I can see the black of the plastic through the wire. I was like, let me change the wire. Or I run out of gas. You don't want to run out of gas or run out of wire on a vehicle. No. You know, you look at it this way. What is it like? Uh, something like thirty-nine thousand registered shops in the USA. So let's say each shop has one technician. That's thirty-nine thousand welders, so right? It's, Just one. It's good math. Okay. It's good math. Strong. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Strong. There's only about seven hundred certified passing welders in the country on aluminum. Forget about steel. There is no certificate. They don't make a test for us to pass that's certified by AWS or ISO. And, you know, from the instructors on the aluminum side that I take the test from, they like, you need like three hours a week on welding on steel. Silicone bronze, you need like four hours a week. Aluminum, you need like, you know, like four, you know, four nights a week of practicing welds to be passable. Mm -hmm. Forget about great. And this is a problem that we have in this industry because you think about it, a technician putting this B pillar in with all these different welds on this particular car, he's welding maybe. 20 minutes total yeah. in full actual welding time. The rest is all the setup, yeah. the you know the clamping, yep. the getting ready, the drilling the holes, the deep burying. So you're not welding that much. So overall on the cars that you work on, and all you do is put B pillars in on cars or quarter panels, you're maybe welding one tenth of your job. You don't walk in like a Grumman or, or, or Lockheed Martin guy that you're just, I weld the whole side and all I do for eight hours a day is weld. You know, so we don't weld that much and that's why we're not in practice for it. Yep. And yep. that's why it's so important to make these practice welds yep. and follow what they give you. That's why it's so important to make these practice welds because when I go I, into shops and find tons of these, that's cute. It tells me that you might have just had iCar come in and do your weld testing, but this probably tells me that you're going to butcher a car. Because this material is nowhere near what this material is. I mean, this is like 16 gauge. I can't go oh, yeah. from the 16 gauge material to this, what, 22 gauge material you're talking yeah. with the same setting. You're talking yeah. one millimeter well, to point eight, why, point nine millimeter. Why when we re-inspect cars, everything's so blown out <coughs> is because the last person that actually dialed in the welder was probably the iCar welding instructor. Yeah. And they dialed it in for this, and then now we're working on this. We need to think about what we're doing more. We, we can't just go around that entire pillar and just make plug well plug well no. you know, even spot well spot well, well I can't, we need to be thinking about what we're doing i can't install a panel without a sharpie right now <clears throat> yeah. i mean so you get those parameters you get those installation instructions and i remember when that's probably about a couple years ago sean collins came down in 3m yeah. and with honda and thank yeah, yeah. you know caboose had i think got food poisoning in japan and come back early <laughs> and thank god because if caboose hadn't come back from japan early we would have been dead in the water and sean collins is probably one of the best body technicians yeah, sure. before he went to work for 3m when he was in the body shop and no, we stood not. out here for half a day, half a day, trying to go over these procedures. And yeah. then we had to tape them to the weld screen. Uh, yeah. And then we had to go with a Sharpie and, and we're marking the part and trying to figure out how many different times we were gonna have to, and it took two different types of welders to do that install on that B pillar. And, and he had it marked out and color coded. And, and I'm sitting there thinking, 
Well, that's what it's supposed to be like. Yeah. And you don't see that at all in body shops as you travel across the country, which is why shops are failing audits and cars are failing post repair inspections. It's it's all about that. We've been talking about preparation a lot, right? This week yeah. we talked about you know like Mark yesterday with the structural straightening, talking about his technicians sitting there, taking it all in and analyzing and building that repair plan. I'm not just going to access the OEM procedures to get the cut line location, right? And and to figure out if I have to pre-scan or post-scan it. <laughs> what I need to know is all everything that's in there and, and read through line by line by line by line. I've been in, I, we had a picket tech inquiry earlier today. I've been in uh, this particular vehicle manufacturer's manuals many, many, many times. Someone found some today that I'd never seen before that I'm going like, oh, wait a minute, which way is it now? So like, now I got to go back through and read through all the procedures again and try to analyze it and try to interpret it, reach out to Stellantis if, I, if, if we have to, but um, it's just, it, we need to be consciously thinking about all of the You, you asked required. me today a question that, you know, 2015 right. BMW 235i, I was like, I believe the quarter panel is rivet bonded. I have to check, it's older, I don't yeah. remember. Yeah. And I, I, even if I remember it correctly, it might have changed since then. So I got to go back and I got to look at it. And many of the shops, like we walk at the shops a lot of times and I, the first thing I do is open the machine, it's always filthy and dirty in there and they're running 030 or 035 wire, and they're welding on outer body panels and, and unibody cars, which is usually 023, 024, 025, or 0.6 millimeter. Yep. And they're welding with too hot, too thick of a wire. And if you open the door if, of that, and we're going to open it later. If only there was a way for us to know <laughs> yes. what, the, what the manufacturer recommends. And if you open the right? door on the welder, <coughs> these welders tell oh, you. Oh, look at that. Uh, uh, you know, and this is great. This can be used for any machine, you know, because it's the same thicknesses anywhere. It'll tell you 030, uh, excuse me, 020, uh, 0.6 millimeter, 0.9 millimeter, or, or 0.8 millimeter, what yeah. range this thing will weld in. You don't want to weld at the high range on a, a, a on a machine that's set up with 023, 024, 025 wire, 0.6 millimeter, yeah. because now you're cranking the machine up. You might want to move to 030. Now you have like a lot of the GM frames are 030 wire. Uh, uh, Toyota and Nissan are usually all 35 wire. Um, out of body panels and, and, and structural rails on unibody cars are usually 0.6 millimeter. So you need to check okay, with Rayman. the manufacturer. What I'm hearing is I'm not getting my 500 hours this week. No, you're and not. And I'm not getting my bass boat. That's no, what I'm not hearing. Your bass no boat. flat rider. <sighs> you're going to um, you're gonna have to be fixing all those cars that you will the last week. There's a lot of science of involved. Bass and bass. listen, there's less than but there's less than 0.00001% of the shops that have three or four machines that are set up for full frame, for unibody, and even with silicone bronze. Forget about aluminum, let's push that off. But just for steel alone, that's that's four different machines, well, two machines with dual, dual settings on it that is set up for the right shop and yeah. or, or have extra gun liners and, you know, uh, uh, g contact tips and different thicknesses of wire. You know, th this is the problem. We have to go in each time and look. And if you do a lot of different type of things, you might need two or three different machines. Okay. Yeah. Let's get back to our Honda for a little bit because I want to I want to dive a little bit deeper into it. So there's we, more. There's Wait, no, there's more. Yeah, yeah. There you go, Kristen. All right. <laughs> so, so back to our Honda. So the other Honda's got a couple of other welding requirements. And again, as a technician, as a shop, as I'm getting your weld on my Honda Civic over here, I should probably be, probably be aware of. Um, one is that when I've got areas of 1500 MPA steel, like I do on my B-pillar reinforcement here, I need to make MIG braze welds. Now, let's talk, um, let's go jump. so let's talk a little bit about MIG brazing. So there are several vehicle manufacturers that, have, that are using MIG brazing technology. Honda, I think, is probably the one that's the most popular because they're using it on a lot of vehicles in that 1500 MPA area. And in areas, I don't see other companies using it. Yes. Uh, for the most part, because they're using it a lot on structural, a lot of the other companies are using it on non-structural, like GM that time we did the cruise. Yep. They were using it on the quarter panel, which is mild steel to the rear body panel with some slot but welds. But I don't have to do the MIG brazing. I'm just going to replace that with a couple of uh, mag welds. Can we get her out of the show? I mean, just seriously, can we, can we get a vote on this? Maybe a poll? <laughs> um, but you had slot welds, which you filled in one side or filled yep. in the whole thing. What's the difference with Honda now? So a couple things with Honda. So Honda doesn't use the traditional slot weld, which is like what? An inch or so uh, yeah. it, it, slot There's weld. actually a tool they sell hole. that there can is, punch the hole. Yep, about an inch if you long. Uh, what Honda has historically recommended is side-by-side -side plug welds, and then a zigzag Not a figure pad, eight, it's two circles eight, together, two, circles two plug weld holes, yes. Oh, uh, with just a little area in between them of steel. We did a show one time on that, yep. we actually made them here, yeah. And then zigzag using the spray transfer method. Yes. 
Whereas GM, if I'm welding on a GM, it, and Honda, as you mentioned, in using in different locations, that, that base of that B pillar and the top of the B pillar isn't, doesn't have brazed joints from the factory only during replacement. So I'm removing spot welds, but I can't get the spot welding arms in there. That's when the make brazing is required. Whereas a GM vehicle, they use it uh, like on the upper rail a lot of times to attach the A pillar. Um, there'll be a slot weld there that I have to remove the MIG brace, put the MIG brace back on. They've got different requirements. They don't require spray transfer. Uh, you can use short circuit on a GM vehicle. Same thing with Volkswagen. So even the transfer method is, is important to know what you're working on when you're working on these vehicles. And now to add even more to it, um, I've seen on some more recent Honda late model vehicles, they're using a single hole with MIG brace. That's so, new this year, yeah. So even, and I believe it's on that new, on that new Civic. If you look at the new Civic, um, which went from 1,500 rear rails to like 980, and there's a bunch of changes on it, but one of the things I saw in the body repair manual um, was that single weld in there with the MIG brace as, as opposed to this. So you know, even from model to model, year to year, it, it might change. Yeah. It's funny, Han, uh, Volkswagen, for example, a European company, Jeez, allows like allows time. silicone bronze to be utilized with a, 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 a bottom line that they allow a Miller or a Lincoln welder. But if I go and weld with a Mercedes Benz, I have to have a pulse. I'm clearly welder. not getting any work done tonight. So once again, I might have if I'm working on a lot of Benzes and Volkswagens or even Hondas, I might need the pulse welder for the Hondas and the I don't and, and own the a pulse welder. You need to be quiet. I'm just saying I gotta fix the car. <laughs> Uh, we have to fire her. <laughs> Where's HR when we need them? <laughs> so, you know, I might have to have two welders that are set up for silicone bronze because Volkswagen will allow a Millimatic or, and a Honda, and, and Volkswagen's big thing is we want you to be able to get parts very quickly sure. in case you need them or service and stuff like that. And this is what we, this is our requirements. But yet with Honda and Mercedes Benz, you might need a pulse welder mm -hmm. for that, which might also be used for welding aluminum in some cases, sure. which you might have to switch out gun liners and stuff because uh, uh, of what you need. So we got some big brazing wire here. Yes. So Kristen needs to replace that spool of wire with this spool of wire. Uh, that's yep, not the yep. only thing. Yep, you got to change the gun liner. You got to change the the torch tip. You know, so you got to switch out Shielding gas. Shielding so, gas has to be switched. So unless you got a dual welder. I think I think your bass trip this weekend is in jeopardy. Yeah, but you got to do you know some what? reading. You can't buy a boat anyways these days, so it doesn't really matter. Like, like Fred, you got to go riff. Riff is good. Okay. All right. So basically, what you're saying is that before I can weld. I should probably look at the OE procedures. You might want to be a good idea. I, <clears throat> I, should, I would say must. I should have to then look at them, make but. sure that I have the right equipment. Not a bad idea. And then I should make sure that I have the right stuff that goes in the equipment. <laughs> yes, equipment, yeah. stuff. 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 This some is of, stuff. Some this of is these, stuff. Some of those. Some of these, <coughs> some of those. Yes, that's what they're listed as. You can Google that. Some of these, some of those. Okay. <laughs> all right. So if I get all of that, <laughs> I'm good, right? Just, I'm done. Good. Well, go. um, not sure. Well, did you inspect the machine? So you've you've got the proper equipment. You've got the proper electro wire. What have you have you looked at the machine? Jobber dropped it off. Okay. It's a blue machine. It's a blue machine. Plugged it in. It turned on. You have to match the blue machine on. to the it blue on. car. All the lights came on. If I have a red on, car, I'm gonna use a red welder. That's right. All the all the <laughs> lights came on. Plugged it in. <laughs> Earlier this morning, Larry was using it. Yes. yes. And so, Larry's wealth look good, so yeah. it's got to be still good. <laughs> and you got the proper drop. I mean, he's the one tech in the shop that cares, so I mean, if you if he used it last, <laughs> boom it. Are the, are, the, are the proper drive rolls in there? Are they, are, are they put in there the right way? He used it last. How? It worked. He pulled the trigger, he made welds. How do you read these how drive do you know rolls? That? Do you know? I mean, aside from Larry telling you all the time, how do you know that Larry's a good welder? Because he tells me constantly <laughs> that he's a good welder. He tells I everyone. I said it, so it's true. Like, like even at like Target, he I tells everybody the, while he's picking out socks that he's a good welder. I saw it on the internet. So I, I saw it on the internet. It's if oh, he did it. Oh, I have seen it. He before. posts pictures of this on <laughs> Facebook does. all the time. I think uh, that that's the coupon he uses. The coupon. He just carries it in his bag, and then when the instructor's not looking, he posts a picture. I got of one it. that looked good, so yeah. I must post it everywhere. Yeah. Uh, so. Uh, I want to make sure I've got the proper drive rolls. I want to make sure I've got the proper electrical wire. Make sure my drive rolls match my contact tips. Make sure my shielding gas nozzle's clean. Make sure I've got the proper shielding gas. Make sure I've got the flow rate of the shielding gas set properly. Yes. 
There's a few things, and a few that's things. just for this particular machine. Now, if I want to talk about a spot welder. No, no, we're not done with this yet. We're not done with this, this yet. This machine, like a spot welder, should always be perpendicular to the work, not parallel to the work you're working on because of EMI. Electromagnetic okay. induction. You don't want the machine sitting next to a quarter panel with him. And I'm welding on a B pillar. I have it next to the quarter panel where I have electronics. It could loop in there through EMI or electro uh, electromagnetic induction. So I want the machine perpendicular to the vehicle so I don't have anything that's going to be in that EMI area as I weld. What about modules? What if I've got a module in an you area? You should disconnect those. <laughs> I mean, I know Icar for years has said within 12 inches. I'm a 24 inch guy. I'm like, within 24 inches, unplug it or remove it from the area. Within 12 inches, unplug and remove. Mm -hmm. So at least if it's within 24, just unplug it. You don't want to short the ground. Nope. That's the biggest issue. And people don't realize that's a big thick wire that's on here for your ground clamp, for your, what they call a ground clamp, but it's a work clamp. All right, so that's a fairly thick wire. If you have resistance, even with a, a, a mag welder or a MIG welder, it's gonna take the path of least resistance, which is those, you know, 22 gauge, you know, 20 gauge, 18 gauge wires. Mm -hmm. It's gonna try and run through there and maybe fry something out on you. I, I have a surge protector. No, you can't use surge that protectors. That I connected to the battery because Snap-on told me. Oh, you're a battery maintainer Yeah, the tool truck guy. Okay. So I, it's a surge protector. And you put it on there, and it won't. Well, nothing. Just take her nothing out of Nothing happens. No modules. You don't have to take the airbags out. You don't uh, have you to know. take blind spots. You don't have to take anything out. Nothing. You're good to go. I've been doing it 30 years, and I never had, had, had a problem. I haven't had a problem. I mean, not. I mean, not, I mean I, you know, maybe not quite full 30, <laughs> but I mean, I haven't had a problem yet. I only buy back like two cars a year. Only, only two cars a year. That's a low percentage. <laughs> a I fix 600. I buy two back. That's a, a great drives percentage. Right on my driveway <laughs> to trade it in. But, and uh, and, and Kristen also gives that a uh, hundred thousand mile ten year warranty, or until I can't see your lights anymore, <laughs> whichever comes first. I, that's the other. I still can't. I, I still go out in shops and I see surge protection. She figures that she blends the clear and sail panel. will never see the welds. Yeah, they'll, they'll never, never see the welds. Undercoating. Undercoating fixes everything. There you go. But just buy that good rubberized rubber coating that dries nicely, and then you put a sound detonant pad over Look, it. Now you really don't see it. My CSI score is ninety seven. <laughs> That's all I'm going to tell you. My cycle time is three days. My cycle time is low. <laughs> My CSI score is high. All right. What other vehicle protection should we be doing to this vehicle? Anything else I should be doing? Like, so we've, we've removed some modules. we got our, 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 our machine run perpendicular you to it. You do know she's from Arkansas. She brings her AK-47 into work figures that protects the vehicle. No, 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 my nine millimeter. A that's, nine millimeter she brings in. Yeah. Protects the vehicle. Well, I don't think that's exactly <laughs> yeah, what Yeah, that's not what they mean. This. So, um, one of my favorite tools for protecting the vehicle, and we did a cool tools on it actually, yeah. is, the, is the 3M spark paper. Yeah. Um, I love the 3M spark paper for glass, and it's, it's, it's quick, it's easy to attach. Also great for making sectioning templates if you want to use that for that as well. But, the spark paper is fantastic. Spark I'm surprised paper, that more, aren't more, aren't more companies making spark, spark paper. Spark paper should know, be right? utilized where you can't attach safely without damaging something. Well, blankets. Yeah. That's that's my opinion of it. And you know, you don't have to wallpaper the whole car with the spark paper, but the spark paper should be utilized where I can't have my well blanket securely <laughs> stay, even with some magnets. I can't get it to, oh, I'm working on aluminum yeah. cloth. I got to use a lot of spark paper because these won't drape on. I can use some clips or clamps for them, plastic ones, but it won't stick to certain stuff sure. or hold on certain areas. And, and listen, this is kind of heavy. They are very heavy. They're yeah. very heavy. They're going to drag and move. They're very heavy, but they're, they work fantastic. And not only on the car you're working on, the car next to you yeah. might yeah. need to be protected also because of sparks or grinding or anything like that. I love using these too for They're good, for, yeah. for, for my Those welding are even, right. you buy and a bunch yeah, of these. So I get asked all the time about, you know, magnetic welding blankets and whatever, and they're out there and they're fairly expensive, but these are, you buy them in bulks of like, I think 10 or 20 at Harbor Freight. They're little circle magnets and I think a, a box of 20 cost me two bucks. And then I come back here with a little screw and a nut and I basically turn every welding blanket into the shop right. into a magnetic <laughs> welding blanket. Yeah. So it doesn't work on them European aluminum cars, it does not, though. No. That's when I got tape. And, and we learned yesterday that also it doesn't work <laughs> if there's holes in the welding blanket. No, right. it doesn't. So don't use your holy ones for welding. No, once they get cold. holes in them, they're probably pretty no yeah. good. Yeah. Yeah. And then obviously we got this big orange things behind us, and this is a welding screen. Wait, and you think that's orange? Reddish. Okay. What I do you want to go with? I'm just saying. 
I thought that this was just the, the panel that like George no, Popper Georgie got his. This is the, buff, this yeah. is the buffing Georgie screen. Everyone <laughs> uses this as a buffing screen, and it's in the buffing department. So you, they're great mm -hmm. for using for buffing, but you need them in the welding area because as people pass by that bright light, yeah. that UV. And I remember years ago I used to do the iCar welding test, and aluminum, I had one guy that walked around, he only had goggles on, and he got a sunburn from standing near it, even though he had goggles that were protective for yeah. aluminum, his face got sunburned because of the UV light. This so this a, protects you. I never see these. I, I don't think we've seen them. In the buffing department. In an audit and there's we've buffing. Done ever. Look, there's compound straight across it. Everyone's probably yeah. laughing out there because there's compound from here down, all over the place, not yeah. up here. And I, the, I mean, I know, I, I don't even know if it's on the certification checklist for certified shop programs, but I don't know that it is everywhere either. we go, I don't see this. And I'll walk up and down, you know, you, typical body shop, you got the center aisle and you got technicians to the right and the left. And we'll walk down and I got techs working and, flash and welding it all day long. and flashes everywhere. And, and I, I love the fact content. that I see sometimes you have some shops, a guy's welding a quarter panel on with no screen near him, a couple of weld blankets maybe, and the guy next to him's throwing body filler on there and you're watching the sparks fly and hit the fresh body filler. So those little sparks are getting embedded in the body filler. As it, but don't worry about it, he uses a cheese grater. Oh. <laughs> so the, question. Um, yes. Avery, a camera, somebody, uh, show closer the magnets. Um, so Brent, I get these at, like I said, I buy them in bulk at Harbor Freight. And so you see those pieces. This is how it comes from Harbor Freight. So it's just a magnet with a, a little hole in the center. And then I've got different screw links. And then the screw goes in. And then I go on the other side of the blanket and I put a washer down. Um, See, stuck. Good, good thing we kept her here. Stuck, so. right? Stuck. And then, you know, this hey, is just for demo hey, purposes. Golly. Then come back with a nut and then this get her done. Go through every hole on the welding magnet. blanket, and I have a magnetic welding blanket. Usually, the hardware costs me probably uh, maybe 10 bucks in for every welding blanket to turn it into a magnetic welding blanket. So Nice. Um, and then it's good to go. And then when that welding blanket's life cycle is over, I take these off and it goes on the new the new welding blanket. So for example, on an estimate, because I know some people are gonna ask this, for the 3M spark paper, I would charge a material cost and a labor to put it on. But because you own the weld blankets that can be used multiple times, I'm only gonna charge a labor fee, not a material fee, okay? So, and, and this might be part of your weld setup. And once again, we don't, we're not showing it right now, but you should have a fire extinguisher nearby. Yep. Yeah, I gotta go have, get it. And I'm and you gotta go get it. and bring it into my stall. Yes. But, but as I start to think about how do I protect my coworkers? Mm -hmm. How do I protect other vehicles in the shop? How am I gonna position the welder where I need to go? Is the welder in the right spot? I really love, and I see it everywhere I go, where I find the guy with the, he's, so he's holding the welder, He's at the car and he realizes he's a little too far away, so he just pulls harder on the cable. Yeah, sure. yeah no. And the welder just comes right along. The like, just like walking that way, the dog on a leash. No, you don't yeah. do that. So I've got to set the welder up and then I've got to go to, okay, well, this is where I'm going to make all my welds. Does it reach? Yeah. Am I? Do I have enough cable? And if I don't, at what point in the weld am I going to have to stop and readjust? I'm, because that's got to be planned I'm out. I'm sure everybody out there knows somebody who works in the union in construction. And talk to somebody who works in construction, and they have sometimes, not they're using rivets on like big steel like we have in this building, they use welds sometimes. When they do welding, there's a fireman. While they're welding, a guy actually stands by and watches the sparks with protective goggles on, and watches the sparks to make sure there's no fire. Then when they're done working for the day, there's a guy that gets paid by the union, by the company, by the contractor to stay overnight and watch that area to make sure no sparks come up. Yeah. We don't do that in the shop. Never and weld on Fridays. Yeah. Never weld after two o'clock. Yeah, don't, yeah, don't. That just should be rules for the shop. Yeah, for rules for the shop because, you know, you don't, want, you don't want to have these horror stories, and you guys have seen it on Facebook, a shop caught on fire, and it's always something with welding. I'm talking legitimate shop, not some, Legitimate fires. Well, no, 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 no legitimate fires. No, you got some, fires. You got some places that like are hacking cars apart for you know junkyard type parts, and they're using torches, and they got a big vat of gasoline they're going to try and sell, and they pour all the gas in there, and the guy's you know cutting with a with a liquid wrench as he's cutting out it's with just, a torch, and sparks are flying, it causes a fire. Yeah. And, and, and you know, listen, life life is a problem, but forget about the life. 
You own the building. You don't want your building burning down to the ground. Well, and it's the loss of the customers' cars that are in there. It, and it's more prevalent. We're seeing more fires kicking up right now. And it's just because the vehicle design has changed. There's, you know, the, the foams, and, foams yeah. and the cavities are smaller. And you and have to disconnect the battery, guys, because you're going to cause a short to ground. So you get the car done. The car didn't catch on fire. Great. We did great. We did our practice. Well, we did perfect welds. Now we go to start the car. The car doesn't run. Why is the car running? And you see it on Facebook. Oh, I have this. The car won't start. What's going on with this? We did a scan. This, that, the other. We got a short to ground fit. And what happened was is you fried the wires from either the resistance welder, from the resistance welder laying against a, a car that's next to me. I'm welded on this car, and there's a car here, and I put this next to the car parallel. That's EMI in that car while I'm welding it. So this car's protected, but this car, I blew the circuit breakers. I blew the computer components. Whatever. This car doesn't start. It's like, we changed the bumper cover. Why is that car not running? And these are the problems that we don't really, it's science, guys. <clears throat> and we don't get the science all the time. All right, so we've identified our vehicle, our materials. We've got our proper electrical wire. We've got our MIG brazing wire. We've got our contact tips. We've got it. We've got, we're ready. We've protected the vehicle. We're protecting our coworkers. We didn't talk about protection, protecting yourself, which I always think is important. I did see you do that. The um, I used that like, to just do this, but it's not as good as this. Is that what's what's that? What's that? The, yeah, the no. dab. The dab. You yeah. can't weld. The but as soon as I get the, the torch technique? set, I used to just no. be able to turn away. You can't weld one hand. You have to use two hands because actually the the dab technique doesn't work. Your trig your trigger finger is not welding. My guide hand, the hand that I have on the torch handle on the contact tip of my, my glove is what's actually directing the weld. This is just yeah. squeezing the trigger. Yeah, you know. Uh, and I've done it with a few people. I've actually had, I've held it, mm -hmm. and you've pulled the trigger, and I've welded perfectly. Why? Because my hand that's guiding the contact tip, or excuse me, the gun nozzle where the contact tip is, and the angle that it's going at, you're just squeezing the trigger. Mm -hmm. So I'm a lefty, I squeeze with my left hand, but I guide with my right. Yeah. If you're a righty, you squeeze with your right hand and guide with your, your left hand is actually doing the welding if you're a righty. I'm a lefty, my right hand is doing my welding and directing the weld. And the eye position and where you put the vehicle or where your position against the vehicle is very important for where your eyesight is. So a question has come in. So we're talking about that EMI and all that electricity and what it's doing to the cars. Is there any health concerns or problems for technicians? There could be. Um, Pace makers, makers and spot welders. From what I understand. Your credit card and spot welder, yeah. that might yeah. be I'll something. be honest with you. Your cell phone? You, if you're, cell phone. Yeah. You, you wouldn't want to put your cell phone on top of a resistance welder. A MIG, MIG welder, not maybe so much of an issue, but I still wouldn't put it on top. A pacemaker, from what I've been told and what I looked right. online, and once again, always check with your doctor on this, give him the parameters of it, and your heart doctor, because you have a pacemaker, check with him if this machine's okay for you. Uh, I know most, uh, uh, most of the microwaves, when you walk into a store years ago, when we were kids, used to see microwave in use. <clears throat> Who cares is the microwave in use? No, that was for pacemakers, because yeah. microwaves would affect pacemakers. Yeah. Supposedly, the pacemakers that are out now in the last 20 years are not affected by microwaves. But then you got you got to realize something. We have 220 volts coming in, five to six amps. The resistance welder, which we don't have a picture of it here, we don't have one sitting here, but a resistance welder is trying to grab that 20, you know, that, that um, uh, 240 volts and five to 10 amps and turn it into 15,000 amps and only five to 10 volts. And it's shocking. So if you don't have a thick enough wire, uh, some of you guys might know this, you have the rattling in the rafters. You hear the wire shaking because yeah. you're using six gauge instead of four gauge, or you have too long of an extension cord. And you're gonna get a, sh that, that could cause a problem with a pacemaker. Yeah. But once again, check with your doctor. It shouldn't affect you from <laughs> so, what I understand. Yeah, basically. I'm not a doctor it's, though. It's not like radiation exposure for x-rays or whatever. So right. physicality of the technician, not a problem in that. Aside I, from, again, the, the flashing from your eyes and, the, or whatever, and, the, yeah. and, the, and the, I, the fumes. And I'll be honest with you. I was at a, um, a, a Volkswagen class, or Audi class, and we were using a resistance welder. And I had my hotel key card in my pocket. It yeah. blanked it. It blanked it. Yeah. Smart watches. And I got scared. Out. I was yeah. afraid that my, my credit cards might have been blanked out. And, and regular watches, too. The magnetic yeah. fields, you know, yeah. unless, you're, unless you're wearing a But, but a physicality, the, uh, the electricity, the, you know, that not a physical harm to a yeah. to a technician now eyes now, skin i still yeah. see it, it maybe it's just me but like i see so many people welding without gloves on I see so many people welding without helmets on 
Nobody wears a respirator. No. Um, and, a, it? and a welding jacket? Good luck Listen, with that. Listen, I'll be too, honest right? with you. These gloves <clears throat> here are great for mag welding yep. or MIG welding. Aluminum, uh, excuse me, steel. When you weld aluminum, you probably have to buy a TIG welding glove for your hand. Now, the guys out there that are certified through ISO with the European or the Tesla type vehicles, you're going to know I got, a, I got at least one glove on my guide hand, my front hand, that's close to the weld, that's heating up like crazy, uh, that I need a thicker glove or a protection on my, 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 my index finger and my thumb because this gets super hot when you're trying to guide it. Yeah. Um, and you don't realize this. For guys who just started the Ford program, you know if you're making a long weld, uh, a fillet weld or a, a butt joint weld, you realize your hand is burning. And it gets to the point that it gets so hot, you gotta pull away yeah. and you ruin the weld. So you might need a big, gloves. thick. You should have gloves. You, you need gloves, gloves and you need the right glove. The, and, the and, telling and yourself for, it doesn't matter because you're, oh, I'm just making spot welds. I'm just barely pulling the trigger. It's not a big deal. You should it, have gloves. And just in case someone like only kind of cart part of what you were saying, you're talking about wearing TIG welding gloves on when you're really not TIG only welding. Only one glove. Not TIG welding. Not TIG welding, yeah. So just because yeah. just I, I could hear someone like, Larry said we well, should be weld TIG welding aluminum. Yeah. No, no, the TIG welding gloves usually thicker because right. there's oh, so sure. much more heat. Yep, yep, yeah. Like, uh, I'll be honest, I went to Mercedes Benz, I bought a pair of the Miller TIG welding gloves with the extra leather on here, I gave the right-handed glove to somebody else in the class because I can't use it. I use a, 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 a thinner leather glove to squeeze my trigger and make it lighter for me, and I, this glove is big and thick, and you really can't bend your hand. It's almost like wearing a hockey glove. I'll be honest with you, it's so thick over here, but my hand doesn't feel that heat. When you, and guys will know this, when you do the 300 millimeter overhead weld, that's, that's 12 inches. Yeah. And I'm welding like this, pulling towards myself. This right here gets super I hot. Bet. Halfway through, you can't weld anymore. So unless you have a thicker glove on, because you can't help it, the radiant heat that comes off of an aluminum panel is ridiculous. Yeah. You don't get it with steel, so you can wear thinner gloves, which are, uh, it gives you a lot of dexterity to your fingers. Yeah. With the TIG welding glove on, you don't have as much dexterity, but you're only holding a, a you see. know, yeah. a half inch you know piece of metal. Gloves, buy Close them, wear it. them. What? For shop owners, enforce the use of them amongst your technicians. When you accept, so at, under federal law, you are supposed to, as the employee, provide the safety equipment um, within your facility. And when you accept technicians performing dangerous operations without wearing or using the proper safety, <clears throat> it is as if you are not requiring it. <coughs> it opens you up to lawsuits. So. Mm -hmm. so um, the other thing, you know, we're welding helmets. I think, you know, that's another area where I still, still helmet. people, this helmet is awesome. Yeah. But from a pre-weld routine, we have a lot of, you know, solar powered welding helmets that have solar. So <coughs> if you haven't been welding for a while, you might want to take that out, get that battery charged up. Cause if you put, just put this on, yeah. strike the arc, and it's well, not charged, guess also, what? It doesn't go dark. Yeah. I, like I, I have a Miller helmet. And the one nice thing about this is it's got a full protection. I don't need to wear goggles with this. If you have a Miller helmet that stops like here, and even if you have a hat on, it could still rack around and get a spark in yeah. there. So, and you gotta remember, that's like 1200 degrees hitting your eye. So you gotta wear goggles, but not glasses. You have to wear goggles that are pressed up against your face to protect yourself. This you may not need because you have a full encompassing type helmet. Yeah. Keep that in mind because you don't want to burn your eye or, or hurt yourself in any and way, it's shape, or form. Supplying, it's it, supplying our air. Some yeah, air. you have some so air in this. I'm not having to wear so you don't the have to wear the mask, and, which can be annoying. The, and the other thing about the air that I absolutely love, especially when I come down here in the summer to do welding, is I get that air blowing on me. Oh, it's so nice. Like I'll wear this like just to warm the shop because yeah. it's cooler. It's if like I got, a, it's like, like my own little air conditioner. Yeah. No other air conditioner. But I, here, so. I, I'm not, I don't want to credit. But I, I want to say I was in. A, it was 3 a.m. But I'm going to be completely wrong. And if I am way wrong, I'm sure I'm going to hear about it. But at one point we were in a class and, and if I'm doing a weld through adhesive, mm -hmm. so if we're having a weld bond, that the off gas of that has a small component of cyanide. So that, that there's a reason why respirators are, it's, this isn't just a joke. Yeah. Um, it isn't just an overreach by OSHA or metal whatever. Metal fume fever, is that what uh, yeah. yeah, metal fume fever. Yeah. You feel that, you, you try and breathe in, you can't breathe deep. Doesn't or taste. if you ever weld it without something or work with a torch, you, you, you go home and you, you feel pitch it. black and you feel the light. The light's still there. Yeah. Jeff Scott brought up a good thing and I, I didn't mention it. Thanks, Jeff. Um, jewelry. You shouldn't be wearing jewelry, even a wedding ring, if you're working in a shop. Take Is it that off. why you're not married? Uh, yeah, that's why I'm not okay. married, because I work in a body shop. Uh, not my charming personality. 
Can't possibly be the reason. There's a list. <laughs> There's a list. Yeah. <laughs> it's more than I work at a body shop. Yeah. But yes, no, you shouldn't be wearing jewelry. And I'll be honest with you, like I have this um, rigid uh, uh, credit card holder yeah. slash little wallet thing here. And I should take this out and put it in my toolbox when I go to weld because it's in my front pocket. I can have a wire lay next to it, some EMI. I might blank out some of my credit cards. Not, not a big deal, you waited two, three days, you get to go, but who wants to keep ruining this stuff? And my hotel key is a very low uh, resistance yeah. to this type of yeah. welding. That you'll actually blank <clears throat> it out and it won't work. That's true. All right, so, so welding helmet, jacket, gloves, respirator, uh, eyeglasses, and boots. Boots. I want to see uh, pants, and I'll be honest with you, this is the biggest problem I see when I teach guys welding. And I go to a lot of places and teach advanced welding to shops after they've taken the iCar course and stuff like that. When you weld overhead, which is from your eyebrow or above, and you always want to have it where it's at your eyebrow level, and your hands are here and you want to be close to it when you're welding, either from the side or welding uh, aluminum, for the guys who know 300 millimeter overhead weld, you're welding this way towards you. Like, all the sparks are flying at you. You need a leather jacket, yeah. not sleeves, but a thick leather jacket yeah. to protect yourself, because as soon as you get burnt, <clears throat> it hurts, and yeah. you go, oh shit. You know, and how many guys have ever done this? You, burnt, you, you, you had a pair of sneakers on, a piece of slag fell in your foot, you're running around the shop, you shove it in a, a, a five gallon bucket, now your bucket gets stuck on your foot because you had to cool it off because there was water in there, and now you're walking around with a bucket on your foot. So, once again, you want to wear leather shoes, never. not sneakers. I mean, never. Like I mean, you? Foghorn leghorn. Shoes. Yes. <laughs> yes. Have you, have you yes. ever had a technician stick his foot in a bucket? Mm -hmm. yeah. I've, I've never. Wait. Wait, I got Never. one worse. I got one worse. And I'm in Arkansas, <laughs> and that's not happened to here. <laughs> you and you All eat right. squirrel. <laughs> and, and then uh, the other dude, thing. you're done. You're <laughs> like done, done. The, the last piece of safety equipment too that I that I think it, I think some people think it's overkill. Just some some uh, ear plug, ear plug, ear protection. Um, and if you think that's overkill, well, you don't want something going Jerry, in your ear. Talk to Jerry Goodson if you think that's overkill, because that's what happened to Jerry. And uh, yes, Jerry told me that story. Jerry's oh, a really good guy from my car and uh, goosebumps Fox. thinking about it. He was at it. Fox Valley, or is he still there? He I'm was. Sure. He was a technician. At, he was a, well, he, he's at, uh, he's at uh, Chippewa Valley. Chippewa Valley, Valley now, yeah. and he was a technician. Jerry's a very smart, good technician. Does a lot of the iCar. You know, years ago did a lot of the iCar programs. Back again, uh, Jerry's a guy who can work on a car and also teach it and. Jerry tells the story of how, how he, a spark came around, his mask, his goggles, everything, and went right in his ear. Yeah. And, and listen, it's, it's horrible to Burned have that. Burned his eardrum, I believe. It just, yeah. yeah and it, he, he, he still got some hearing issues with it. Yeah, it's, it's, it's just it, not good. Why wow. mess yourself up? Yeah. So. Wow, why? Wow. It burn your eardrum. That's, yeah, okay. yeah that's going to hurt. Imagine, nasty, now nasty. listen, that's burning your eardrum or burning your ear. Imagine <laughs> burning your eyelid. Or oh. your eye, your God. iris, or your or the or the pupil of your eye, yeah. or, or your white of your eye. That's done. Done. Stop yeah. drinking. Yeah. yeah. Okay. You got, All one, right. you, got one, <laughs> you got one chance. Well, you get two yeah. chances, I guess. But. Two chances. All right. All right. So we're all protected. We've kind of touched on the on the practice walls a little bit. I don't want to beat that up too much, but again, I think it's important again to stress that we need to be welding on the same tight thickness. Yeah. Of material, this, the same joints, not this, the same position. So if again, well, if I'm welding on the car, I'm, I'm welding a quarter panel. I'm not welding like like this, right? Well, Straight here, across. I'm welding what? What? What we have to do in certain classes is right, like what he's. Well, it's like, a 45, 45. Yeah. So. So let's look at Kristen's joint that we got over here, right? So she's got some verticals. There's a vertical. We've oh, got, technically, you got an got, overhead. What's the saying? We got over. No, 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 no. Right, no, no, no. You got an overhead we got here. Vertical, no, no. Overhead. You got a no, vertical, no, no. horizontal. No, no. I figured it out. So, so I did do that earlier. This technique. Yeah, no. Works perfectly. No, you don't want to do that. Just, and we've got some horizontal. And, I, and if I use my left hand well. to rock it. Yeah, no, you don't want to do that. Uh, you can't. You can't turn the arc. It has to be in a. Mm. Uh, it has to be perpendicular. And listen, guys, your gun angle. The 15 degree gun angle on steel or silicone bronze, and with steel you can do pull a push. With, a, with silicone bronze you should do a push because you want the argon gas to kind of sweep and clean that area and keep a zone. Aluminum you have to use a push, okay? And it's a gun angle, so most of the time if I'm welding aluminum or steel, I'm on this side of it as I'm watching the weld come towards me and looking at it. But Question? the other things that you want to think about, you know, I'm going to mock through the welds and think about what's overhead, what's what, where am I going to reach? 
is the vehicle on a lift, am I tall enough? Do I need a... You well, know? that's the whole idea of some of these frame machines yeah. that can go up and down. Well, as When I'm low? done welding, I'm going to raise it up. Just like, uh, for example, uh, with, with uh, um, resistance welders, if I'm welding a rear body panel, I'm welding down low on the rear body panel where it meets, meets up with the uh, inner floor pan, mm -hmm. I might need a, a big, huge C-clamp. Once I'm done and I get around the taillight pocket, I want to switch that to a smaller yeah. one. One, it's lighter, it's easier to move around. And listen, in some cases, you have to contort your body to, to match up to this. And I've always, I've always told people, when you go to weld, you make two or three practice passes without squeezing. Mm -hmm. When you're finally done two or three passes, then you weld. Yeah. So we're just gonna, make sure you're comfortable. We're gonna practice our welds. We're gonna practice them in the position that we're gonna make. Yep. We're gonna double check if the vehicle is set up and we're ready. Yep. Right, we got the clearance we need and that's all good. And then I'm gonna take those practice welds and like actually make sure they work. Yeah, we should probably do some visual okay. inspection. Maybe a little destructive testing, like Larry said. We may be doing a twist test. We might be doing a peel test. Might be doing a wedge I test. I personally like a peel test better than a, than, a, than a twist test. We've got some OEM procedures. <laughs> o, some OEMs even have information right in their manuals. So they have specifications for what they want to see from a destructive oh, oh, testing wait, wait, standpoint. Wait, 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 wait. Something else I just realized. Nope. Really? You do know when you buy your resistance weld, the, there is sometimes, most of the time, I should say most of the time, they give you two different size resistance weld caps because certain companies require a certain size mm -hmm. resistance welding cap not only because of the size of the weld, but also because of the flange distance that's there. So you might have a standard size, but in pitches, some, yeah, yeah. For, for, the, for the edge. And then also with resistance welding, you have a distance between them, which is your pitch between them. Yep. Edge has to be in the same area. So these are things that are important to realize when you go and weld, there's a lot of different parameters that have to be taken into account. Mm -hmm. Uh, with them, and most of the resistance welders that you should have should be cooled to the tips. So you have tips, you don't have to, you can clean them, you might be able to shorten them once or twice, but most of the time they have to be replaced a lot. So keep those, you listen guys, keep those 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 copper uh, uh, caps because you get a whole 55, uh, five gallon bucket of them, that can make money, buy barbecue for everybody. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, yeah, so there's a few things that you need to do before you start welding on that. It's kind of, it's got, it's kind of what we're trying to Look, say. Look, at this rate, I'm not getting my bass boat until, like, September. <laughs> no, if you listen to us, you'll get it faster. Because doing it right will make it easier and make you more efficient. And it's less hours on my paycheck. No, it'll give you more hours on your paycheck. No, because nobody's going to pay me for all of this. No one's going to pay you for mistakes, <laughs> but they will pay you for right. all the parameters that you have to follow. Well, here's the thing. At the end of the day... Let's hope your estimator and your shop owner get you paid. But a customer shouldn't pay with their life because you wanted to make a bigger check. That's it. It's as simple as it it's is. Pretty, I think that's a pretty it's fair. A, it's fair. It's yeah. really, really fair. Yeah, I think yeah. so too. Um, well, that's um, that's a great that's, show. That's a lot of stuff. It's a lot. A lot of stuff to do. Uh, we oh wait, no, there's more. No. There's more. Drink. Wait, wait. Drink. No, no, there's more. And listen, I'm going to steal this from you for a second because it's your, your, your baby, your uh -oh. thing. I go through an ISO testing all the time with Mercedes-Benz. Got to be down there every six months, Audi and, and Land Rover Jaguar. I got to go every two years. And it's a hard test. You're there two, three days. And I'll be honest with you, it's, the, it's an ISO test. So it's the same test that airplane welders have to go through. There's nothing for steel for us. Now I have friends who work in the steel community that work on buildings that have to, you know, that have to go through testing all the time to weld on these buildings and structures. We've come up, Jason's come up with a great welding validation program, mm -hmm. which is probably the most comprehensive welding program. Comprehensive welding in program industry. in the industry that's going to test you. You select. Mm -hmm. I'm going to weld an. I'm going to weld this T mm -hmm. on this car. I'm going to weld a frame rail on a car, and Jason goes through this whole welding process on the vehicle. You have to pull the repair procedure. You have to look at the repair procedure. You have to set the panel up right. But prior to that, you have to pass a welding validation before that on just coupons to make sure, all right, you know how to weld. Now we can go to the vehicle. So like the iCar uh, SPS06 test. Uh, 
STS 05. STS 05. Test that you actually, you have to section a rail and then it's got to fit on a jig. We're doing something physically on a car part. So you have to maybe buy a, a used part, you have to buy um, maybe a new part, and you have to section this part or a section of the part to yeah. show the repair procedure. Your technician, so to it, say, it's summary, fantastic. Your, a shop signs up, <clears throat> the technician picks their OE, <coughs> whichever OE you want to say that you want to test and validate on, and then you have a coaching session. Uh, yes, we do do it with aluminum. Um, you have a coaching session with your weld coach. Right now it's Jason, there's other weld coachings, there's Larry, there's a lot of people. Your, your technician has a session with a weld coach and we either say he's good or he's got a lot of work to do. And, and that's one thing that I think is a really a novel approach to this as well is we, we give that technician that maybe isn't ready for the, for the validation test, we give them homework. Yeah. But we don't just give them the homework, we give that homework to their manager, supervisor, whomever else is on there so that they know, So because what happens Larry, I go away to something, right, and I come back. Chris says, well, how'd it go? Oh, it went great. I did awesome. I did awesome, right? Yeah. She has no way of knowing whether, so what we try to do is let them know, like, hey, Kristen, Jason's got a couple of deficiencies he needs to be working on. It, I want to work on his overhead It's one of the most comprehensive tests for steel that I've seen out there. Yeah. Or if we need to, we, we have an aluminum, which, you know, is very comprehensive. It's, well, it's basically like, I mean, you're, you're going to make the weld live. There's, yes. So, I mean, yeah. if you can't pass the pre-work with the instructor, you, you got to go back until the instructor says you're ready to And the to measurements test. have to be there. It can't be, oh, I'm just off a little bit. Oh, no, no, no. You no. have to have everything right. We're not going to interrupt you in the process. When you say you're ready to test, you're going to do your test welds. You're going to do everything. We're just going to sit there and watch. And you got one shot. It's not, yeah. go try it again. Yeah. You, know. you either, it, because, uh, uh, because guys, the I'll customer's give, car gets one shot. Right. So I'll if give you, you guys an example. It's like to, going to take an ASC test. You walk in, and most of them are done now through Prometrics or something like that. You sit down at a table. There's no one there to help you. You take the test. You take 25 I, or 50 questions. This is the same thing. You got one I, shot. I was in a shop it. recently, and there was a box next to the door, full overflowing with ease. And I thought, well, the whole shop must have recently certified one frickin' tech. There, I mean, there was probably 20 or so of these in the box. And a lot of them didn't pass. At, well, no, the, <laughs> well, till you pass, yeah. right? The customer doesn't get that same benefit. No. And so we don't give you that in testing. If your technician can't do it once and pass, he doesn't pass. You don't want your customers destructively testing your welds. No, no. And so it's a great program. and. And there's a lot of techs that don't pass. Yeah, um, and they're surprised because they, I'm certified, and then they don't pass. Yeah. So. Hey, Jordan Neal, thank you for posting the uh, link to the um, welding validation page on, yeah. on, uh, uh, on our internet page. I and appreciate it's, that. It's our guy. Oh, yeah. that's our guy. Yeah. I didn't know that. Okay. <laughs> You've been working with him all week. I, 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 didn't, I didn't know his last name. He goes by Jordy, not Jordy. It's, it's all good. I was having good. some iced tea. I had some Kentucky iced tea. All right, let's wrap this up. I'm so. trying to help out and give guys credit. I'm just saying. But there goes Kristen with a bus driver with a bus driver license, throwing me under the bus and driving over me. Dude, and I'm backing up and hitting it again. So. Well, your iced tea, your Kentucky iced tea is empty. Yes. Your Kentucky coffee is empty last night. Cigar's night. gone. Kentucky, cigar's cigar's gone. gone. Yeah. We should probably get you to a cigar bar, I Yes, we have to go there because. And a steak. And, uh, he needs a steak. And, and a, a steak. And I'm going to go home. Chris is going to go home. And Holly's, and Jordan, who works with us, is probably going to go home at some point. Yeah, I don't know Jordan's list. Jordan, I'm sorry I didn't know your last name because you don't have a name tag on you that says your last name. But okay, excuse me that I was trying to promote he's, the site. He's also been doing that at every show. Oh, well, I didn't see it all the time. Man, this Jordan guy really likes what we do. This Jordan guy's good, good, man. It's super interactive. He's been at Guys, can show? we make a poll on Collision Repair Technicians United? Dude, they're going to vote for me. How much they abuse me. Everybody's voting for me. Because I'm trying to do the right thing. <laughs> so, all right. Well, we've done like 20 shows or six, something? Six a day for three days, so That's yeah. 20 shows. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, but how many have we done over the last few years? It's, it's, it's over just, a thousand videos on YouTube. Yeah. Yeah. They'll all be available on our YouTube channel for free. It'll be on our Facebook free. channel. Free! Interact with us. Send us questions Don't watch afterwards. any of them. Don't watch any don't of them. Don't go. Don't watch. Don't do anything. Um, don't yeah. comment. Please don't comment. <laughs> yeah. All right. So the replays are out and available. 
Uh, we've got a couple appearances left for the year. We've got Fort Worth. We've got Denver. We've got South Carolina coming up, the Southeastern Conference trade the show. The only trade show is showing um, up. And at. then I, I will tell you, it is is tentatively tentatively official. <laughs> um, in December, we will be in Southern California for a week. I heard a rumor that somebody, he's crazy, yeah. somebody wants now, to, and, and you know, it's funny because it's a guy that we had battles with at one time, uh, and that was a friend uh, of ours. We're going to do, we're going to do, gonna a, California. we're going to do a week in Southern California, so possibly two sessions down there. So we'll, yes. be, we'll be out there in December. We'll, we'll be out there. It. Awesome. Well, it's been fun. It has been fun. And you guys adventures. go drink and have safe I'm flights not home. Drinking. And I'm my water. Um, <laughs> my water. I, water. I will. I'm dollar. at a Tennessee uh, iced tea. It's Kentucky. You've already. You're changing. Well, I'm, um, I'm going to Tennessee now. All right, we're all done. Right. Bye, Good everybody. Night. Good night. <laughs>